Hello and welcome back. Like all kids, I was fascinated by dinosaurs, and that fascination has stayed with me through adulthood. As the years have progressed, we've learned more and more about these wondrous beings who lived all those millions of years ago. There are people among us that believe dinosaurs never even existed, despite all the evidence. In the video today, we'll take a look at one of these people's reasonings. Enjoy! Behold, proof that dinosaurs never existed. How? Crocodiles need the sun to survive. They have to bask to get their energy. Crocodiles are reptiles. Dinosaurs were not. They were, but not in the way that you think of reptiles today anyway. They were warm-blooded rather than cold-blooded. To say a dinosaur is a reptile is also to say that a bird is a reptile. This is a very common misconception. As you can see this gharial from, I think, India doing. Well, that proves that since the dinosaur story says that crocodiles are dinosaurs and live for millions of years. Clearly you did little to no research into this. Most, if not all, paleontologists accept that modern day birds are the descendants of dinosaurs, not reptiles, and certainly not crocodiles. Then that means that there was enough sun throughout all of that time, which means there was no cataclysm to keep plants from growing, which means that every dinosaur that supposedly existed should still be here. And there was no need, there was no need for them to change into birds, nor could they, because there's no, there's no, uh, in their genes, there's no genes for feathers is what I'm saying. So you do know of the relationship between dinosaurs and birds, and yet you claim crocodiles are the proof. As for the cataclysm and sunlight, I don't think you understand how long 65 million years is, nor how evolution works. The Chicxulub asteroid didn't wipe out all life on the planet in a second. Species of dinosaurs existed for at least a million years after the impact in New Zealand and Australia. Kind of explains why everything he wants to kill us. It would have taken around 4 million years for life to bounce back to a healthy level in South America, which was basically ground zero for the impact, where it still took around 32,000 years for all life to die out there. For perspective, modern human history, i.e. civilization, only dates back to a maximum of 10,000 years with modern humans only appearing roughly 200,000 years ago. The instructions for feathers are not in, the, in their DNA. Of course, you don't have dinosaur DNA because the alleged, the alleged fossils of dinosaurs are just rock. You are correct about us not having dinosaur DNA and that fossils are indeed rock. So how can you be certain that dinosaur DNA didn't contain coding for feathers? We have found fossils containing feathers. Because fake fossils and rocks are the same thing. Except one is manufactured, of course. Made in China and such places. No. Fake fossils are usually made out of some sort of resin. And it's cheaper to produce things in China. By the establishment which has the money to do it. The Smithsonian admits in this page here, the Smithsonian being a propagandist uh, tool of the devil to mislead millions. That's one hell of a claim right there. Good thing your channel isn't popular, or you would be getting sued. It says bone versus stone, how to tell the difference. And by bone, they're referring to alleged fossils, alleged bones. Not, they're not really bones. They're just said to be bones. No, they're not. Most people know that fossils aren't bone. Children think they are, but children are stupid, allegedly. So 
Alleged bones versus stone, how to tell the difference? They say there is no single hard and fast rule for distinguishing rock from bone, but there are a few principles that can definitely help you tell the difference. This is really the fault of Riley Black. They worded this very poorly. I doubt you're going into much detail, so I'll explain. The article deals with how to tell the difference between fossilized bone and naturally occurring stone. From a quick glance, you could be forgiven for thinking that they meant actual bone. However, Riley classifies this in the second paragraph. It was not a fossil at all. My professor told me the dinosaur bone was really a concretion or a small lump of mineral that had formed around some bit of detritus. By no single hard and fast rule, that means no objective solid rule, which means there is no way to tell the difference. Not at all. It means there is no method that is better than another. Scientifically, you just have to jump to conclusions based on their so-called principles, one of which is... Uh, where is this? It says there are a few principles, blah blah blah. One of the simplest is that you need to know where to look for fossils. And they say that if it's in your lawn, it's just a rock, most likely. They're supposed to be found in certain rock formations. In other words, in a certain layer of the Earth, it's supposed to be a assumed layer. However, that's based on their dates of millions of years and stuff, which I refute as unscientific and lies in my video series called Atheism and Atheist Creation Myths Refuted. Looks like I have a series coming up then. Ooh, this is exciting. So much content. Where I cover, I think, uh, dendrochronology, among other memes. Dendrochronology is the dating by tree rings. They assume a constant rate of growth. However, just one flood would skew the date arrived at. Oh, well, tree rings, you say? The oldest known tree is about... 4,850 years old. So that still falls well within your 6,000 year old Earth timeline. Did you debunk yourself? To appear far older than it actually is, because the rate of the growth of the tree would increase by the bringing in of nutrients by the flood and water, of course. Not if it were a global flood like you guys believe. Salt water isn't really good for anything other than killing land-dwelling plants and animals. So their dates are lies. And that's just one example. The same assumption of no contamination is the, is the Achilles heel in their, in their propaganda about dates. Are you taking the piss right now? Are you a po? Anyway, so bone versus stone, how to tell the difference? Rather, alleged bone versus stone. Correction, fossilized bone versus stone. How to tell the difference? There is no way to tell the difference between alleged bone and stone. There are many ways. Read the whole article as well as thousands of others that are available. My favorite is the lick test. So... So the fossils that, the alleged fossils, the supposed fossils, the claimed fossils of dinosaurs are just rocks manufactured into the desired shapes by the rich establishment. Let me get this straight. A bunch of rich guys spend thousands of hours carving elaborate skeletons with many parts missing and then flew all over the world before planes existed so that they could bury them in the most out-of-the-way remote locations just to have the world's greatest scavenger hunt that they would never live to see to come to fruition. Maybe I'm simply lazy, but that seems like an awful lot of work for a handful of rich people to do. And I refuted the dinosaur myth using uh, science, the science of crocodiles that need the sun. Therefore, there was always plenty of sunlight in the alleged millions of years. Therefore, 
dinosaurs did not die out because there was sun, therefore plants, therefore creatures to feed on plants. Basically nothing changed and there was no significant cataclysm. You've refuted nothing and proved that you have absolutely no understanding of the topic you're trying to refute. Voila! Crocodiles utterly destroy the dinosaur myth. Barney's not real, grow up. How dare you bring Barney into this? You don't even have a Barney-level understanding of paleontology. Maybe if you watched more Barney, you wouldn't be making such ridiculous claims on the internet. There you have it, guys. Crocodiles don't disprove dinosaurs. If you're still not convinced, go find yourself a saltwater crocodile and ask it if it thinks dinosaurs didn't exist. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this little trip down into the insanity of YouTube. Before I go, I just want to say thank you to my high-level patrons, Purple Haze and Pyramid Head. And to you, dear viewer, read a book. Until next time, friends. Don't be a dick.